My fellow Virgin Islanders, this is your commissioner for the Department of Planning and Natural Resources, Jean-Pierre Orio. For over 30 years, we've discussed the adoption of a comprehensive land and water use plan, and I am proud to say that we at DPNR are here to complete this mission. This plan will be used as a tool to make decisions on how we can protect environmentally and culturally sensitive areas, what new development looks like and where, prioritizing investments to promote fairness and equity across the territory, and more. We are asking all residents, businesses, and stakeholders to be present and share your values and ideas to help shape the final plan. We are asking all to be active participants in molding the future of our Virgin Islands. Show true VI pride and attend our upcoming town hall meetings on your respective islands. Take part in shaping our future, and I look forward to seeing you there. For more information, visit planusvi.com. Good day, and welcome to the Government House Weekly Press Briefing for the week beginning March 6th. I am Government House Communications Director Richard Mota for the benefit of the radio listening audience. If you watch us on YouTube, Facebook, or the Government Access Channel, you'll notice the change to our set this afternoon. Uh, in case you are wondering, we are returning to the original format of the Government House Weekly Press Briefing that we started on Monday August 19th, 2019, and subsequently changed in 2020 during the COVID-19 pandemic. With me this afternoon is Assistant Commissioner Ruben Malloy from the Virgin Islands Department of Health for the latest COVID-19 data and information on how Virgin Islands residents can get a free COVID-19 test, vaccine, and booster. And so without further delay, I will turn over this afternoon's briefing to Assistant Commissioner Malloy. Commissioner. Thank you, Director Mota. Good afternoon to the beautiful people of the Virgin Islands. Once again, the Department of Health would like to thank the Honorable Governor Albert Bryan Jr. and his office for this opportunity to update you, to update the public. We continue to see a decrease in our COVID-19 cases following a spike in February. We thank the community for its continued vigilance. COVID-19 is still here, and it's important that you continue to protect yourself and your family by frequently washing your hands and safely distancing yourself from those who are not in your household. Today, we have a total of 25 active cases territory-wide, 11 on St. Croix, 12 on St. Thomas, and two on St. John. Our hospitalizations territory-wide total zero. That is, zero hospitalizations on St. Croix at the 1F Louis Hospital and Medical Center, and zero hospitalizations on St. Thomas at the Snyder Regional Medical Center. Please remember, the bivalent vaccine is still the best protection from COVID-19, 
and everyone under age six months or older is urged to become vaccinated and boosted. Also remember, if you have not become boosted with the bivalent vaccine, you are not protected against the latest COVID-19 variants. Vaccines remain available on St. Croix for adults on the second floor, number 35 Castle Coakley, Unit 5, known as the old Carib Hope Center building. The hours of operation for COVID-19 and influenza vaccine clinics are 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday through Thursday. No appointments are necessary for vaccines. For information, please call the Community Health Clinic at 340-718-1311, extension 3760 and 3796. For children, vaccines are available at the Maternity Child Health Clinic, also in the Old Carib Center building, number, five, number 35, Castle Coakley, Unit 5. For more information, please telephone 340-718-1311, extension 3201 or 3875. On St. Thomas, for adults, vaccines are available in the Community Health Clinic on the second floor of the Snyder Regional Medical Center, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon and 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Anyone wanting a flu vaccine on St. Thomas is asked to call 340-774-7477 to arrange an appointment. For children, vaccines are available at the Maternal Child Health Clinic. Appointments can be made by telephoning 340-777-8804, extension 2600. On St. John, vaccinations are available as a part of the Wednesday pop-up event conducted in the Virgin Islands Port Authority gravel lot. Vaccines are available between 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. and testing is conducted between 12 noon to 3 p.m. If you are ill, please get tested. If you tested negative on a home test kit and continue to feel ill, seek a confirmation test at a local provider or laboratory. Anyone testing positive upon com confirmation at the provider or local laboratory qualifies for antiviral medication that can lessen the severity of the illness, possibly shorten its duration, and avert hospitalization. The Virgin Islands Department of Health is announcing that its COVID-19 drive-through testing sites territory-wide and COVID-19 hotline are closed as of today. While the department shifts the project from federal to local funding. However, the Department of Health urges the public to seek the services of local providers, including St. Croix Clinical Lab and Community Medical Lab on St. Thomas for COVID-19 testing. As we previously reported, the federal public health emergency ends in May, and the Virgin Islands Department of Health has been preparing to provide these services utilizing local funds. The public will be notified once COVID-19 testing drive-through and hotline has been re-established. Thank you again for the opportunity to share these news. Back to you, Director Mota. Thank you, Commissioner, Acting Commissioner Malloy. Uh, before we leave this afternoon, I want to inform the community of tomorrow's ribbon cutting ceremony at the Governor Wang F. Louis Hospitals North facility at 1 p.m. You can watch tomorrow's ceremony live here on Government House's Facebook page or on the Government Access channel, which is channels 27 or 527 if you have via. Also, I want to remind the community of the town hall events hosted by the Department of Planning and Natural Resources on the planning process for developing a comprehensive land and water use plan for the territory. Last week's town halls, last week's town hall events in St. Thomas and St. John were a rousing success with hundreds of residents asking questions and commenting on the process. Tomorrow, Tuesday, March 7th, DPNR will host its St. Croix town halls on the land and water use plan from 
2.30 to 4.30 p.m. in the Great Hall at the University of the Virgin Islands' Albert A. Sheen campus. And again on Wednesday, March 8th from 12 to 2 p.m., so 12 noon to 2 p.m. at the same location, also at the Great Hall at the Albert A. Sheen campus for the University of the Virgin Islands in St. Croix. And so for more information on the additional dates, well, I think this is the last of the scheduled dates for uh, these town hall meetings and open houses. But for more information on the process, you can visit uh, planusvi.com. Again, that website is planusvi.com. And finally, I am pleased to announce the expansion of Administrator's Corner, uh, which is a weekly radio program to update Virgin Islands residents on capital projects and other government-led community initiatives. The Administrator's Corner will air weekly on Wednesdays from 9 to 10 a.m. on 107.9 FM. The Vibe beginning on Monday, I'm sorry, on Wednesday, March 15th and will be hosted by all three island administrators. This program is the latest initiative in the Brian Roach administration's transparency and outreach efforts, and we are proud to partner with The Vibe to bring all three island administrators together on one program at the same time to engage the radio listening audience. And so those are the updates that we have for you this afternoon. Uh, we will take questions from the media now, um, and I see that we have uh, Suzanne Ellis from the Virgin Islands Source joining us virtually, and so go ahead, Suzanne. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sure. Good afternoon, Hi. Suzanne. Good afternoon. Um, I'm just wondering if you need to make changes in those dry sites at some point. Yes, we do. Um, since the White House announced um, the cessation of COVID funding in January, we've been planning to um, transfer the funding of those project, pro projects from federal funding to local funding. So we will uh, open them as soon as possible, as soon as um, that, is, that plan is completed. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Is that it for your questions? Yes, yes, yes thank you. Thank you. Uh, I see that we also have the Virgin Islands Daily News online. Go ahead. I'm not sure which reporter, but go ahead, Virgin Islands Daily News. Hi, go ahead. What is the of our Go ahead, Suzanne. I think it's Suzanne Carlson from the. What is uh, you're coming in a little choppy, but I think I, I could discern what you're saying, um, what you're asking. Um, you're asking about the status of your open records request to Government House, um, and I can provide you an answer with that. We have, there were two status, um, as, you, as you know, there were two open records requests sent to Government House. We um, have fully complied with the first, and I gave you a status update last week that we are working on the second, and uh, it's pretty intensive. You requested uh, quite a bit of documentation, and so we're, we're um, still working on providing that to you, and so we'll get that to you as soon as we can. The uh, phone numbers, addresses, and the transparency website still isn't up. When, when will the transparency website be up, and when will the Lieutenant Governor's Office have corrected it? Uh, I will provide, what I can do, so the, 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 the contact, the, the point people for uh, those questions that you ask uh, to, to be able to, to, to get you the most accurate information, I can connect you with those individuals to provide you um, the, the most up-to-date information on the status of the transparency website, and I believe you asked about um, something about the addresses for the Lieutenant Governor's website. I can connect you with the, the point, the point persons for um, for that to get you the most um, accurate information on that in, uh, on uh, those, those questions if I understood you correctly 
Okay, okay. I, I'd ask, I'd ask I'd you and the first time to get on the What's the status of the behavioral assessment act? This, I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Suzanne? You're, you're, it's, it's really challenging to hear you. You're, I don't know what, what's the issue with your connection, but it's, it's, it's really challenging to hear you. Every week, it's always a challenge. Yeah, I'm pretty what sure that's what you're asking. What is the status of the behavioral health act? The status on the behavioral health act? Yes, the implementation. A treatment. The the, the 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 Behavioral Health Act has been passed and signed into law, and the Department of Health is working on complying with that law. And we are we are in the process of building that treatment facility that is prescribed under that law. Okay. okay. What about what the cannabis? Is the government going to nominate? Can you repeat that question? I'm sorry. Is the governor going to nominate more members to the Cannabis Advisory Board so they can meet and draft rules and regulations for the Cannabis Use Act? Short answer to that question, yes. Okay, when? I mean, as, soon, as, you, as you can understand, the, the boards and commissions process is, is totally voluntary. Um, and so even if the governor nominates someone, it is up to those individuals and the advice and consent of the legislature to appoint those individuals or to approve those individuals on the board. And so it's not uh, as easy as just picking someone and they, they, they come to work. Okay. okay. What's the status of tax refunds? What's the status on what? Tax refunds. Tax refunds are still being paid uh, as up, uh, we're up to 2021, tax year 2021. Uh, just last week, uh, another round of $3 million in tax refunds were paid out by the Virgin Islands uh, Bureau of Internal Revenue. And so we are caught up up until this last tax year, which was tax year 2021. As you know, um, individuals still have up until April 18th, I believe is the filing deadline to file for their 2022 income taxes. What, what about the 500 Can you, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just heard $500 have all the social security recipients gotten the five hundred dollar checks they were paid? Yes, everyone who was eligible based on the listing that we received from the Social Security Administration was paid. Um, and it's important to note that that listing was up was for individuals who were um, uh, recipients of the Social Security, um, recipients of Social Security up until March 2020. Um, the administration has um, made the decision to go ahead and recognizing that the people who were, um, were recipients of Social Security after that point that the listing was um, received from the Social Security Administration are still in need and so we are working right now to get an updated list from the Social Security Administration. That includes those individuals who um, were recipients or who may have qualified for Social Security after that March 2020 date and so further information on that will be forthcoming. I, I will follow up on that. And please let me know when you have a response. All right. Thank you for your questioning, Suzanne, and thank you, uh, Suzanne Ellis from the Virgin Islands uh, Source. I don't think that we have any other media joining us this afternoon, and so that concludes this Monday's press briefing. We will see you all next Monday, March 13th, and I'm pretty sure that is not a holiday, and so we'll be here at 1 p.m. Thank you for joining us.